already tell from the thumbnail, this one today is gonna to be on the version two oil pressure sensor adapter. This video is gonna be about installing the oil pressure takeoff, the add-on oil pressure adapter for the Saab B204, 3405, and 35 motors. Because it's such a tight space in here, I wanted to give a little bit of extra detail as to why and how we make certain decisions on doing installations. So we're gonna pull the camera a little bit closer and jump right in. What you're gonna get in the version two adapter is a bonded rubber seal for the adapter itself to seal the block, which does help improve sealing over uh, basically banjo washers, crush washers that are normally there. This area is kind of prone to leaking. And then in addition to that, what you get is an O-ring for the O-ring receiver on the gas on the adapter here. This also is intended to help reduce oil leaks that these can kind of be known for. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to mock this up into the motor. Okay. And we're gonna wanna get it as tight as it's going to be used in the motor. So we'll tighten that down real quick. Okay. Now why that's important is because the adapter has three locations for the sensor. We have a limited space to actually fit the sensor in this kind of pocket right here. So now that we have it tightened down, I'm going to go ahead and mark this as the location that we're gonna use. So now when I take that off, I know that the other ones need to get plugged. But before doing that, I also wanna double check that my sensor is actually going to fit in this location and looks like it will. So that will be just fine. You can see that's a pretty large body as well. Uh, it doesn't need to be tight right now because it's gotta come back off in order to get the adapter off. One other thing I'd like to mention too is that if you do have a sensor body that's too large for a location, what I would recommend is a male-female 45 degree adapter. Uh, it's not really common to be used that I've seen in all the ones that I've installed and the ones I've gotten feedback from, but if you get a large sensor, I won't get that too tight, let's say you got a large sensor body in there and it just doesn't quite fit where it needs to, having that adapter uh, gives you some opportunity. Uh, if you have issue finding that on a local supplier, you can always reach out to me. They're not very expensive, they're like $3 and I can get one out to you. So uh, this kind of opens up some ability also if you know your sensor body just doesn't fit there. So we'll get this all taken off. Throw that on the ground, I guess. And now with that one marked as our used hole, we're gonna go ahead and block off the other two. With that all taken care of, we're going to fit the sensor itself. And there's one last test fit that we need to do. Now with the O-ring on there, it's going to bottom out and get nice and tight. This is machined in a way that's gonna get it as close to the block, the sensor body rather, as close to the block as possible, but I have seen some variations in different starters where this plastic cap here can interfere. So we're gonna mock up a starter real quick and see if we have that issue. Uh, either way, I'm gonna show you what uh, the solution is in my opinion, and we'll go from there. So now with the starter in place, I can see that there is a slight interference uh, with that cap. So now it's important to recognize is that sensor cap, that cover is just a, a decorative trim piece. It's not vital for uh, the sensor. It's hollow underneath there, which we'll show you by pulling that cap off and, and continuing on with one of our uh, solutions for that. So at this point, this is fine. You could tighten up the starter. Everything's fine. It's just a decorative trim and nothing's really gonna uh, be a negative result of those two touching each other. For me personally, I do have a solution that I like 
to work around it. If you get there and see this being the case with your starter, you can make the decision either way. You can use it just as it is or make the uh, slight modification that I'm about to show you. Okay, so now that we have the sensor back off the car, looking at it on the bench, you can see with the cap pulled back, uh, we have just the, the blade that would be on your normal like T5 car uh, pressure sensors. Uh, this is just an add-on for the T7 setup, but this sensor is the same. I mean, it's really just a spade terminal with a tab with a wire uh, solder to it. So the idea is we wanna get this cap off here. Now, my preference would be to just cut this off and to depin this. And you can see that I have a modified bobby pin here. So if you don't have the proper wiring tool, rather than uh, buying one or having to send one out, you know, it's easy to make a tool to depin that. So I'm gonna kind of do that real quick and, and demonstrate that as an option. So you'll see like on, let's get you in the camera there. In this connector here, there are slots on the top and bottom of the terminal there. Basically just gonna slide that into place. Okay, and then give it a push and that wire should pull out pretty easily, just like that, okay? So one thing you can do is just cut this off of here, okay? And then add our, slot, our, our shrink tube over it, heat shrink it down, and we're pretty much done at that point. Uh, the other option is to unsolder this. So just for the heck of it, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that as well, see if I can't just, uh, preserve this cap here for, you know, future reference. If I got to do some kind of, you know, photos of it, something like that, I want it to kind of be intact. So let's uh, do that real quick. Okay, now that we basically uh, demonstrated both means of getting this cap off, uh, desoldering or just cutting it off and taking the uh, terminal connector off of this end, we're gonna put it back together and get it ready to go back in the car. So for now, I've already cut some heat shrink uh, to length. we be sliding that over. And lastly, we're using a zip tie. This is just gonna be here during the shrinking process so the uh, shrink wrap doesn't pull off the sensor body itself. So now we'll just heat that up. And then while it's hot, I like to pinch it down so we have a nice tight fit. But then lastly, if you wanted to, we could heat shrink over that to close it all nice and tight. So I'm gonna do that real quick. We'll throw it back on the car, everything assembled, and we'll check our clearance, make sure that we're not touching anything in that case either. All right, that pretty much wraps up any changes to the sensor that we're gonna need to make. Let me go ahead and install one more time. And for me, normally this would be the final installation. But uh, I'll go ahead and put everything back together and show you the clearance that we have with the starter now. Okay, perfect, I'll bring the camera around. I think we're gonna end on that. It's pretty straightforward to do this little mod. Again, not entirely necessary. Um, nothing that's back here is gonna cause uh, grounds or short inherently. So that cap is just to keep things from falling on it, causing corrosion. It's not weather sealed in itself. So that's not necessarily a concern either, but doing this little mod to the back side of the center uh, definitely is a nice little peace of mind. That's a little bit extra work than I would like it to be. It'd be great if there was enough room to do something where no changes were needed, a straight bolt in piece, but this is a pretty simple compromise for, uh, for what we're getting here. So I'll swing the camera around and uh, call it a wrap.